Five. 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 Huh? You are live. Oh, oh. Welcome to 100 Yards of Football. Today we got an NFL team preview as we're going to preview the Baltimore Ravens out of the AFC North. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. And joining me today to break down the Baltimore Ravens is a gentleman. More and more can I say. He played 12 years in the league for the Atlanta Falcons. He was a first-round selection in the 1981 draft out of Florida State University. He was a two-time All-American. He's out of Delray Beach, Florida, and he always tells me, down there in the part of South Florida, that's where the best defensive backs and best wide receivers come from. <laughs> My man, Mr. Bobby Butler. We're going to break down the Baltimore Ravens. So if you like the video today, please come in and share it. We are 100 yards of football. So, Brother Butler, tell us about the Baltimore Ravens. One of the youngest and up-and-coming um, um, teams in the National Football League. Um, I, I love everything about them. First of all, let's start with the head coach, Coach John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh is a hard-nosed, blue-collar coach. That's the only way to explain it, Vincent. He's a hard-nosed, blue-collar blue coach. And why do I say that? He likes the physical part of the game. Not just, a de not just on the defensive side, but also on the offensive side as well, right? And so, hey, listen, man, I'm excited about them and their future. Um, on offense, you know, they got everybody coming back except one, and that's um, per perennial pro bowler Marshall Yonda, who just retired after 13 years. He, he, called, he called it quits after 13 years uh, retiring, but they, they got everybody else coming back. And the, the thing about them, the thing about them, They've got a young quarterback, and we're talking about league MVP from South Florida, from the 305, the 904, the 561, Mr. Lamar Jackson. And he pretty much changed the game last year. He did things that even Michael Vick didn't do. He rushed for over 1,200 yards on offense. He threw for over 3,200 yards as a passer. He threw 36 touchdowns. What more can you ask for? He broke all kind of records in his second year in the league. And I'm so excited, Vincent, because guess what? He's just going into his third year. He's just going into his junior year. So, man, they got a lot to be excited for, and I'm excited to see this young man play because he reminds me so much of me when I was a young kid. I didn't get this opportunity. But he's got it, and he's running with it like a wild stallion. And so I tell you, the thing I love about him, the thing I love about him is that he's young, he's won a bunch of games, and he's ready to get back at it. They were very disappointed in how the season ended last year. After just terror rising the lead during regular season, they were very disappointed in how they ended. Lamar Jackson, as a starter, is 19 and three in regular season. I mean, who wouldn't want that kind of that that kind of start, right? But in the playoffs, Vincent, he's 0 and two. But he's so young, he really hadn't even started yet. And that's the thing: as he matures, as he get better, get wiser and older, man, the, the sky's the limit, right? And so I'm excited about him. And the way he plays the game really caters to how Coach Harbaugh wants to coach. Physicality. You know, when you got a running game, a running game means this. We're going to make the game physical. And so you got Lamar Jackson, and then you got Mark Ingram, who also rushed for over 1,000 yards in the same backfield. That's a lot of pounding going on up front. They are running the football. They are running the football. And then again, they're going to run the football. But like I said, the guy had a great year, not just on the ground. He had a great year passing as well. He had a great year passing. His wide receiver room is great. You know, he's got um, – but here's the thing about, 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 about the way they play. So let, let's, let's get this right. Let's understand about his wide receiver room. You know, Marquise Brown. You know, Devin DeVarney, Miles Balkin, all those guys can play. But because of the style of football they play, 
you know, I don't think he had one receiver to catch over 600 yards. But they do this collectively as a team because Mark Ingram caught passes out of the backfield, right? But his number one passing threat is his tight end, Mark Andrews. So when you're a running style quarterback, when you got the gift to get away, you're looking for outlets. When you're running the ball, get ready to escape, you're looking for guys so you can dink and dunk the ball to, right? And so his tight end, Mark Andrews, was his main target last year because of his running ability and his style of play. Hey, listen, I want to say kudos to uh, John Harbaugh for building a system around his quarterback. He took him high. He made an investment in him. And then also he um, 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 put a system around him so he can be productive the way he need be. And the league is trying to figure it out. The league is trying to figure it out. So it's an exciting time for them on offense. Their offensive line is going is pretty good. Um, the only thing they got that they're losing is Marshall Yonder, who's, who's who's leaving for retirement, 13 year veteran. Can't blame him. You know, sometimes it's just time to go. You know, his body may be tore up and burnt out. But I tell you what, I was hoping he would hang on a little bit longer because there's no telling what this team is getting ready to do in the real near future. From a defensive standpoint, Vincent, you know, one of the things that they do. In Baltimore, and we've known it for years, even back in the Ray, Ray Lewis days, is that they play hard-nosed defense. And, you know, they got a defensive coordinator they call him Wink, Don Martindale. And that guy right there blitzed more than any other, def other defense in the National Football League last year. So, in other words, he's coming at your quarterback. So your quarterback is not safe with this Ravens defense, right? But at the end of the year, they had three games that they were not proud about defensively. They gave up over 500 yards against um, the Kansas City Chiefs. They gave up over 500 yards against the Cleveland Browns. And then, you know, in the division round of the playoffs, the Tennessee Titans, led by that monster in the backfield, really ran the ball down their throat. So here's what they did this offseason. They invested heavily in their front seven. And I'm telling you, the league better get ready because they're defensive sound now. You know, they got they traded for a five-time Pro Bowler, Calais Campbell. All right. They also traded for Derek Wolf, linebacker. They, re, they just rebuilt everything. And then do, through the draft, they drafted Patrick, uh, Patrick Queen out of LSU, who is, I'm telling you, this guy is made for pass coverage and blitzing the quarterback, Vincent. That's, that's what Patrick Queen do. He's going to get the quarterback. He's got that kind of ability and he's got the ability to cover anybody out of the backfield so they got him then they drafted in the third round Malik Harrison out of Ohio State and Malik can bring the pain I'm telling you all right now so they shored up that front seven and then you, you know you still got Brandon Williams that's anchoring the 3-4 scheme in the middle all right and so they're pretty good and then they also kept Matthew Judon you know they franchise tagged him. He had nine and a half sacks last year. So their defense is sound. Their secondary, they got a trio of pro bowlers. Number one, Marcus Peters. He's a corner. I like to call him Vincent, not just a cornerback. He's a corner safety because he plays corner like he's playing safety. I have to explain that to y'all one day. And then you got Marlon Humphrey at the other corner. And then you got the old man now. I call him old man now because he's been around a while. Earl Thomas III. And then they just re-signed Jimmy Smith at corner. He's got some miles on him, but Jimmy Smith still can play the game. Hey, listen, when you're a cornerback and got miles on you, here's how you win. You don't win with your legs no more. You win with this. This is how you win, with knowledge of the game. And you know more than the offensive player you're facing 99% of the time, right? And so you got those guys, and then they got this hybrid player. He's that's a, that's going to be a new term in football now because of the way the game is is evolving with these offenses evolving to these pass happy offenses. You're going to hear on defenses about the hybrid player, the guy who can play safety, the guy who can line up, get down in the box, and play a little bit of linebacker. And they got that in Chuck Clark. He's an exciting player. He's going to be an NFL star. Remember that name, Mr. Chuck Clark. And he's the one, he's leading the group. I mean, he's wearing the headsets, Vincent, calling all the plays out on defense, right? And here's the thing that's the, ex here's the gravy for the Baltimore Ravens. We know they got coaching. 
We know they got offense. You know they just shoot up their defense. Here's the gravy. They got the best special teams in the game. They got the best special. Listen, Justin Tucker, the kicker, is considered the most accurate kicker in the NFL right now, and he's a pro bowler. Their punter, Sam Cock, who's also the holder for Justin Tucker, he's an all-pro. Then you got your long snapper, Morgan Cox, all pro. Hey, listen, man, <laughs> they got everything covered. There's only one thing they need, and they make up for it, though, Vincent, from a defensive perspective, is a true edge rusher. That's why they blitz all the time, right? But they're getting it done. And so at the end of the day, this team is off the charts. Now, it's going to be a very interesting season if we play this season because you got them, you got the Tennessee Titans on the rise, you know, you got, um, uh, you got the Chiefs, right? You got the, you got the Texans. You still got the Steelers. You know, bruh, it's going to be an exciting year. And you got New England with that new monster in New England. So I can't wait because we need to get some things. We need to see. <laughs> We need to see this thing unfold, right? And so that's what I have on the Baltimore Ravens, Vincent. If you like the video, please comment and share it. Brother Butler, everything you said about the Baltimore Ravens are correct. Most of all, I got a lot of respect for the head coach, John Harbaugh, and how over the years he's kind of geared his team. He's always been the guy that likes physical football, but he drafted a yes. quarterback and he really dictated the offense to his quarterback skills. When I think about the Ravens and I think about Lamar Jackson, you heard the song Brother Butler played, Shaft. I'm a bad watch your mouth now. That's how I look at him in Baltimore. It's this right here. Lamar Jackson, to me, is the most explosive player that's came into the league, and that includes Michael Vick. Since I've been in this world, and I'd be 60 years old on July 17th of this month, the only other player I think Lamar Jackson can compare to as far as as offense explosion is that young man that came out of Omaha, Nebraska, and his nickname was the Kansas Comet. December mm -hmm. 1965, he had six touchdowns. And Brother Butler, who know, knows who I'm talking about, the young man, Gail Sayers. That's what I think about Lamar Jackson. Very explosive player. A guy who had tremendous numbers last year. He ran an offense where the running game gained close to almost 3,300 yards. It reminds me back in the 1970s how the power running games were back then when you had McGotha Lane with the, with the St. Louis Cardinals. You had John Brockington, who that was with the Green Bay Packers. You had Walter Payton, who was with the Chicago um, Bears. Then you had Leroy Kelly, that was with the Cleveland Browns. Then you had Franco Harris, that was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. O.J. Simpson with Buffalo. Back then, and then let me throw Calvin Hill in there with the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the 70s, it was very simple. Line them up and pound the football. But there's one big factor here. You're pounding the football with a guy that's a legitimate 4-3, maybe 4-2-8 guy behind the center that was running really the option. And that is awfully, awfully tough. To me, Lamar Jackson is a superstar waiting in the wings. His potential is off the charts, but it's one thing that separates him. Can he improve as a pocket passer? In the playoffs, in his career, he's, what, a 48% passer. He has five mm -hmm. interceptions, three fumbles. To be great in this mm -hmm. game, and my man, Mr. Bobby Butler, can contest to this, you got to win championships. It's not, you can look good in the regular season, but it's all about the chips and the rings. And that, mm -hmm. to me, is going to keep Lamar Jackson from probably being one of the best or not the best playing on the center. And that's what I'm saying. I think his potential is more than Patrick Mahomes because he's mm -hmm. working with less. But I'm going to tell you about the Ravens offensively. If Lamar Jackson can improve as a pocket passer and be able to throw the ball outside the hashes of 20 yards, then you're looking at probably the greatest offense on turf. Because let me tell you something, Marquise Brown, even though he was a rookie last year, he still had, I think, close to 600 yards receiving. He's a legitimate 437 guy. The draft of the young stud out of Texas, Devin Duvet, he's another 438 guy. 
Then they turned around, they got J.K. Dobbins in the backfield with Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards now. And Mr. Dobbins, you saw what he did in the national championship game against Clemson. I don't have to say no more. And the most important thing, that offensive line to me, got the two best young tackles in the game. On the right side, a young man is from the Atlanta metro area where we broadcast in the day. His dad was a pretty good tackle in the league, Orlando Brown Jr. And the other young man, Ronnie Staley, out of Notre Dame, left tackle. He's coming into his own. So it's all about Lamar Jackson improving as a passer. Defensively, this one you tell about great coaches. I'm not going to say good coaches. Baltimore last year had one deficiency. It was in their front seven. They couldn't rush the pass. They only had 37 sacks. What do they do in the offseason? John Harbaugh, along with the GM and the owner, said, you know what? We saw what happened in the playoff game against Tennessee. For us to take it to a next level and be Super Bowl bound, we got to go out and get somebody that can help us in the front seven. They didn't go in the draft. What they did, they got two very good football players. Collis Campbell, what more can you say? The guy's got 88 career sacks and played lights out in Jacksonville for the last two years and had 17 sacks. And Dad Wolf, to me, has always been the best defensive lineman for the Denver Broncos over the last five years. Then they get, I think, two of the top linebackers in the draft. Patrick Queen, as Mr. Butler said, he is a man. All you got to do, I'm a film guy. Look at the national championship game against Clemson. He was the best player on the field. With all that offensive talent, eight tackles, 1.5 sacks. But most of all, he made Trevor Lawrence in the Clemson offense a nightmare that night. And Malik Harrison, to me, the most underrated player in the draft because he went in the third round, he should have been the first round. He played at Ohio State and had over 200 tackles last year. To me, that's production. And then, like my beautiful partner just said, Mr. Butler, about the secondary. Marcus Peters, as we say on 100 yards of football, glove. Marlo, Marlon Humphrey, <laughs> his daddy Bobby was a great running back at Alabama, glove. And if y'all think for one minute, Earl Thomas, I asked the Texas and lost a step, I'm afraid he has not. The Baltimore Ravens <laughs> are a complete football team. And that being said, it's all about the superstar. He's from the same area as my co-host. The Florida, South Florida Beach area. <laughs> Lamar Jackson. If you can prove it's a passer, then we're going to be talking about the greatest show on grass. Remember that team that won the Super Bowl, I believe in 2000, the St. Louis Rams? They had a quarterback back, <laughs> Kurt Warner, who can really throw the football. They had my man, Isaac Bruce, out of the University of Memphis. They had Torrey Hope from North Carolina State. And they had that stud by way of Carver High School. San Diego State, Mr. Marshall's <laughs> fault, over 1,400 yards that year. This offense can be very close. So I'm looking at the bottom of Ravens. It's all about your quarterback, man. Can Lamar Jackson take his game to the next level throwing the football? And if he does that, hey, the doors of the church are going to open. But there's one thing before I end this that I don't want to see. Lamar Jackson is a very special talent. To me, he's the most talented guy that's came in this league that's played quarterback. He's got one thing he can work on. It's the mechanics and throwing the football. He makes teams very hard with his legs. Mm -hmm. I just hope, based on the season he had last year, 36 touchdowns, six interceptions, over what, close to over 1,200 mm -hmm. yards rushing, he don't mm -hmm. fall into that category of a young man I remember that came in the league that Brother Butler, you talked about on your legend video. Mm -hmm. Out of that Pittsburgh area, mm -hmm. that tagging pretty boy, Dan Marino. Remember in 1984, he had over 5,084 yards pass and 48 touchdowns, 17 INTs. He got to the Super Bowl that year, and San Francisco kind of handled their business with him, and he never made it back. Right, right. I just hope Lamar Jackson doesn't fall into that category. Right. So if you like the video today, please come in and share it. We are 100 yards of football, and thank you, and have a very blessed weekend. And also wish me happy birthday, because Friday I'm going to turn it up. Happy birthday! <laughs>